what Jesus are you serving? And I know you say, well, Marcus, there's only one Jesus, and this is true. But us as a society of believers have chosen to create Jesus in the way that we think that he should be. And we're going to go over some of the ways that believers have really messed up the the way we follow Jesus and the way we serve Jesus and who we identify Jesus to be. In the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus is the son of God, that he is the, the living sacrifice God sent to atone for all of our sins. And he is the only way into heaven. Well, you got a bunch of believers out there nowadays that think that you can, and not even believers, but we have a bunch of people that call themselves Christians, which don't even think or know the true way to heaven. The only way to heaven is by accepting Jesus into your life. And um, you can't good person your way into heaven, right? There's people out there that if you ask them, how do you get to heaven? Well, you get to heaven by being a good person and not doing anybody wrong and things like that. And that's just simply not the case because you're not going to be able to go there uh, just by good faith, good faith and, you know, good works and things like that. You have to accept Jesus in your life. Uh, and then live your life accordingly. So there's other things where we have different religions, different um, branches of Christianity, right? Where we have Lutheran, Methodist, Presbyterian, all these other different types of Christianity, because at one time or another, two heads of the church had disagreement to where they split apart and made this other type of Christianity minus the part that we don't like. The Bible says not to add away or take away from or not to add or to take away from. So it's a sin to add words to the Bible or to take things out of the Bible. We're not supposed to to mess up what God's wrote. The Bible is God's creation. It is a breathing, living word from God. Um, and when you have people that create branches of religion that say that certain things are OK, like there's the Methodist church is allowing homosexuals to be pastors nowadays. The Bible clearly states that it's not OK. That is a sin. And I'm not here to offend anybody, but that's what the word of God says, um, where it says that a man should not dress like a woman. We're not supposed to dress like women. That's what the Bible says. I don't make the rules, you know, but I follow them. So we can't take these things away from the Bible and then branch off and then create another form of Christianity and say that it's the gospel. It's not the truth. It's not what the word says. So. While we may want to polish up Christianity, make it more uh, livable, doable, more worldly, we're sinning if we do that. Like there's Christians out there that think that, think that it's OK to smoke weed as a Christian or that it's OK to drink as a Christian. And while, yeah, there's nothing that says you cannot drink in the Bible, it does say to not be uh, a drunkard, to not be uh, it says to be sober uh, and of sound judgment. So if you're taking multiple drinks very, very soon, you will start to lose the judgment, the clarity that comes from being sober minded. Right. So that's where the sin part of it comes in. The Bible says not to be um, under the influence of anything. So if you're going to be influenced by smoking weed or impaired, your judgment, you know, things are off or you're just trying to escape your stress that you've gone through for the day. That's a sin. But there's Christians out there that think that that's OK. And it's really not. So. We have to understand the word of God. We have to let the word talk to us, work through us, flow through us, flow in us and work on us. Right. It transforms us from the inside out. Romans 12 said Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that means all the stuff that we've been taught our whole life, all the worldly stuff that we've been told that is OK. It's really not, guys. We have to we have to to uh, compare everything with scripture. But what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about me overeating? What does the Bible say about me spending more money than what I need to on things that I don't need? Um, you know, and compared to our actions, leave our heart posture at the door, leave um, what the world says about it at the door and compare it to what the Bible says. And if what we're doing doesn't align with what scripture says, it doesn't matter what man-made religion out there says anything. You got you to gotta understand, guys, there's people out there that throw shade, say that uh, Christianity is not real because science, who you think created science? <laughs> God created science. Everything is from God. Nothing that was made was made without him. The Bible clearly states that there's nothing to dispute. Um, so 
when we have people out here, you know, saying that we're a cult or, you know, this and that about being Christians. I mean, yeah, we do some weird stuff, right? You know, we we can be sort of speculative at times, but that's when that Holy Spirit takes over, man. You get the feeling, feeling the fire of God inside you, man. You might want to jump up, scream, raise your hands, run up and down the aisle, man. Who knows? Whatever the Holy Spirit makes you do, you do it. But at the end of the day, you got to let the Holy Spirit transform you and show you how to live your life fully submitted to Christ because we don't know how to do it, guys. If let 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 us try to do it on our own, we won't do it because we want to be lovers of ourselves more than we want to love Jesus. That's where we come into this. I don't have to go to church. Uh, me and Jesus have a personal relationship um, and all these things that the enemy likes to tell you to keep you from being fully you know, surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. If he can keep you attending church online then you'll never go in there and really feel the Holy Spirit fire all over you. You'll never really go in there and, you know, join a life group, have these great, close, intimate relationships with brothers and sisters of Christ that iron sharpens iron and helps remove all the bad things that we got going on in our life. If no one sees our sin, no one's going to correct it. And that's where the devil wants you to stay at. He wants you to stay in seclusion. He wants you to stay isolated. He wants, he doesn't care how often you worship God, as long as he gets you, at some point or another with one vice or one sin or one weakness that you struggle with on a daily, he's not going to use something against you that you're strong against. The devil can't use an addiction on me that I've never struggled with. Right. So I used to be strung out on drugs and, you know, addicted to the casino, addicted to pornography, addicted to sex with, you know, with women and stuff like that. And so he's going to use that as a weakness to try to like get me to Come on back over here. Come back to the dark side. You know, remember all the fun we used to have? And at the end of the day, Jesus delivered me from that. And I know that it wasn't fun. That life wasn't great to live, you know. But um, let's say, for instance, I don't struggle with um, going out and like maxing out credit cards and like, um, you know, hiding bags of clothes under the bed. So nobody sees that I've bought all this stuff. So he's not going to tempt me with that. Right. So the devil knows you. He knows what you struggled with in the past and he cannot come up with anything new. He's a perverter. You know, he, he misconstrues all the good stuff that God does. He creates a bad version of it because that's all he's trying to do. He's trying to be God. And that's why he got kicked out of heaven. So people are out here serving Satan, worshiping Satan, and then got the nerve to say, well, we don't really believe in Satan because he's not real. So then why are you worshiping someone you don't believe in? That's the hypocrisy and idiocracy that comes with that. So at the end of the day, the devil will rock you to sleep. The biggest lie he's ever told is that he doesn't exist. Meanwhile, he's back laughing at everybody because you're all going to be in hell with him at the end of the day. If you don't, you know, accept Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior. He died for our sins, guys. Such a tremendous price was paid for us to be able to go to heaven. And I don't think anybody puts that into context. Right. So say you are the father or, you know, brother of, you know, your family members and people that you love. They're all going to die. Right. But you can save everyone by giving your life. Now, I'm pretty sure that some of you out there would would do that. But how hard would it be for you to do that? You'd be fighting it tooth and nail, looking for another opportunity for another person to jump in place with you or sacrifice themselves for your family members to live. But at the end of the day, when it all was done, done and boiled down to it, you still had to give your life. But you would do it because you love those that you were doing it for. Now, imagine that's what Jesus did, but he did it for all of us. The ones that were still sinners, the ones that were not going to accept him the ones that would accept him, the ones that would throw shade and say, oh, Jesus isn't real. He did it for all of those and he did it for you too. So I just encourage you, pick up a Bible, guys. This thing right here is the manual to how to live life. You don't need to guess. Read the word multiple times. Let it work on you. Let it tell you what Jesus was about. Let it tell you what his purpose was on this earth. Let it tell you how good it was for him to die for us, because without him, we would all be going to hell because you can't good person your way into heaven. There's no other religion. There's no other way into heaven but accepting Jesus. The Bible says Jesus told his disciples, I'm the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the father except through me. So if you think you're making it to heaven, 
I, I've got news for you. You're sadly mistaken if you don't know Jesus. So really hope that you guys are, you know, out there telling people about the Lord. If you know someone that um, would benefit from this message, share this with them, guys. Share this content. Share this. I'll tell the people the hard stuff you don't want to tell them because you want to keep them as friends. I'm not out here to make friends. I'm out here to save souls for Jesus. So um, really appreciate you guys. Hope you guys are having a great lead up to the holiday season. You know, this is the uh, Super Bowl for for uh, Christians this and Easter, man. So we look forward to this all year long, guys. So I hope that you guys are feeling the joy of the Lord all over you. You guys feel loved and encouraged. That's going to do it for this one, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. God bless.